Hey guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Dwayne Wood from Diabetes and Endocrine Wellness Center. Uh, I'm so excited that you're with us. Uh, we were having a great conversation with Jill and Todd, who are pump trainers, pump educators, diabetes educators. Um, we had to end our conversation the last time, but we are coming back now. We're going to answer some very important questions. One of the questions is, what is next in the management of diabetes? And here, Jill, give a personal message to people who are struggling with diabetes. Let's get started. And then as far as, yes, what we have currently on the market with two systems with um, hybrid closed loop, meaning that the, the insulin is automated to an extent, but the patient does still need to bolus, um, take insulin for meals and um, for certain situations for corrections, um, still needing to calibrate the sensor occasionally just to make sure that it's on point when the patient's sleeping in between meals, really letting that system automate that insulin and trusting it to um, essentially keep that time and range, like what Todd mentioned, between that 70 and 180, aiming for um, particular, I know in our system, 120. Um, so it's newer um, technologies, though, like I said, being studied, so exciting to know where it's going, even in the near future. Awesome. Doc, I was yeah. going to just, uh, for, for those of, of your patients and those watching your YouTube channel, I think one thing just to, because we, we throw these terms around because we all kind of speak the language because we've been all involved in all of this for such a little while. One of the things I've, I've used as an analogy for folks is to think about a closed loop system that everybody is familiar with, and that is cruise control on a vehicle. And mm -hmm. cruise control is a true closed loop system in that the vehicle, you set the vehicle for the target and based on factors like if you're going up a hill, the engine will have to go up some, uh, you know, the RPMs will increase to, to keep the speed the same. If you're going down a hill, the thing will almost completely shut down uh, to keep you at that speed. And in some cases, my car now actually will break when I'm going down a hill uh, because that's a true closed loop system. And a closed loop system in that regard is a system that is responding to its environment to maintain a particular target. And that's a cru cruise control does that. And everybody's kind of familiar with that. And so where we're moving with insulin pump and CGM technology is toward a system that regardless, as Jill said, true closed loop is you eat something and immediately the pump responds. And, and that's the environmental thing. And, and it responds to it and gets you back to where you need to be as it is now hybrid we still need to tell the pump uh, that I'm eating in order mm -hmm. for it to, to make that. Um, and some of that is, is on, you know, the technology. Some of that is on the speed of the insulins, which we can, we can say, come on, drug companies, bring faster insulins to market because that's going to help us a lot. But, um, but that's just uh, something that I use in training patients. Right. Right. That's I love, I love that analogy. Yeah. So, so, um, so as a diabetic, can I look forward to the day, when I could run down and grab my favorite pint of Ben and Jerry's, Jerry's Garcia ice cream, <laughs> and just throw it back and expect the pump to like take care of all of that. Is that, is that, is that what we are shooting for? I, I, I would, I would answer that <laughs> to say, I would still never tell anybody to eat a pint of Ben and Jerry's <laughs> because I think there are other issues there that uh, I think that, I think that we are shooting for a person being able to live a more normal, healthy life. And that still requires that people make healthy decisions with their eating. But one of the things that I think Jill and I probably tell a lot of patients is, you know, part of, the, of what happens with some patients in diabetes is they believe I've got to eliminate all these things from my life. And that if you're at a birthday party and everybody's having a piece of birthday cake, I, I would tell them, have a piece of birthday cake, have a piece of birthday cake, you know, and bolus before you have that birthday cake, but don't make birthday cake a daily thing. 
<laughs> you shouldn't have, uh, you know, uh, nobody should do that. Though. <laughs> it's not, it's not good. And eating the whole cake is not good. Um, but, but having small portions and enjoying those things. So I would tell you one day you'll be able to go downstairs and get you a nice, normal size serving of your favorite Ben and Jerry's <laughs> ice cream. and the pump should be able to take care of that. <laughs> and, and, and I'm glad that, that you, that you mentioned that because <laughs> there are a lot of people who, who think that um, as a diabetic, they've got to give up all of their favorite foods. And I tell them often, it's not, it's not the fact that somebody ate a cookie that caused them the problem. Uh, it's, it's the fact that they ate a cookie and then they had another cookie, and then another cookie, and then another right. cookie. They washed it down with some tea, and then they thought they were good, and they ate a nice big salad. <laughs> <laughs> that salad fixed everything. So, 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 so it's the and that causes the problem. And then one of my, one of my favorite stories um, that I often share is I, I, had, I had this patient um, who... Um, they, they were, she was elderly and she and her, her husband would come to visit. And so she was the diabetic. He was not. And they're sitting in the room one day and, um, he had always been on her, you know, you shouldn't eat that. You shouldn't eat this. You shouldn't eat this. And, uh, so he comes in and we finish our visit and I'm ready to walk out the door and he's sitting in the, in the corner and he's just antsy, right? Because he wants her to tell me something and she, she refuses to tell me. And he said, if you're not going to tell me, I'm going to tell him. So now I'm interested, right? So I come back in the room and I said, I said, so what's going on? And he said, Dr. Wood, let me tell you a story. He said, I went out to the store and I can't, I left my wife at home and I come home and I couldn't find her. I'm calling. I walk into the house. I couldn't, couldn't find her. And he said, we have a, a, a ranch style. So no upstairs. So she's got to be there somewhere. And I'm walking mm -hmm. through the house and I hear the shower going. And so I'm calling and she's not answering. And I walk, go into the bathroom. I pulled the shower curtain back. And he said, Dr. Wood, you would never guess what I found. So I, so I said, well, what did you find? He said, my 76-year-old wife in the shower, fully clothed, eating a Snicker bar. <laughs> <laughs> so oh she, she was so afraid of him telling her that she couldn't have a Snicker bar that she was finding all these creative ways of, of, of getting her snicker bar in the shower. Oh, wow. You know, he found snicker bars under her, you know, in her, in her drawer. And, um, <laughs> so I share Bless with, her <laughs> so I share with families <laughs> and I share with diabetics and, and we did this a lot when, when we saw a lot more kids, but I would tell the parents have a day during the week. This is your day where you guys get to have, I mean, pick whatever your favorite, food is you know this is our jelly bean day this is our ice cream day this is our whatever day and you would be surprised that when when that child or that person adult even now knows that that is coming then those other days aren't as big a problem we are now beginning to understand food physiology and obesity medicine and how how people interact with food one of the questions we ask in our weight management program is, if you were not hungry, would you still eat? Because if you're not hungry and you still eat, guess what? You can out eat the medicine. You can out eat the, yeah. the meal plan. You can out eat whatever else is going on. And sometimes that's what we fight with with our, with our folks who are diabetic, particularly our type twos, because there's this, we, we've, we've taken away a part of their enjoyment a part of their life and as soon as we say no then this thing kicks in so okay i've got to have i've got to mm -hmm. have that and then add to that the the shame that we talked about early and, and earlier and that just kind of uh, perpetuates the whole process okay so so we've got this technology we've got this hybrid closed loop where do we go next jill i i can we can both speak to that i mean it is the fully closed loop system. I mean, I think that's that. I mean, I think that um, finding, personally, I think that it's going to be more and more finding ways to make it less of an invasive part of a person's life. Um, there are, are preferences people have. Surprisingly, there, you know, these days there are basically two types of pumps. There are durable pumps, um, of which Medtronic, Tandem, uh, there are some others. 
um, are, are out there. Um, and then there are disposable pumps. I think that surprisingly, you would think that, um, and disposable pumps would be like Vigo or Insulets, Omnipod, those type things. Surprisingly, there are people who don't want the pod type things. But I think learning, um, I think making um, the, pu the pump and CGM system, that closed loop system, as we move in more and more in that direction, uh, something that um, the patient will have more choice in terms of how uh, they wear those things, just because that leads to better compliance and a patient who's more um, involved, or a better way to put that is a patient who takes more ownership of their own therapy. And that, that's so important uh, for, for everyone. And I, I think that's, that's part of it. And I think that that's something that our company's probably grown in. We kind of stuck with this really very plain looking uh, pump for years and it was a great pump, but um, people wanted this different kind because it looked different. And I think we, we've kind of learned that if a patient yeah, doesn't get yeah. the very best uh, because they don't like the way it looks, we need to do something about that. Go ahead, Jill, and what and what's your thoughts on it? As a female, and then of course, having pediatric patients and um, geriatric patients, just knowing that being able to sort of customize it to what that patient's preference is down the road, I think that's so nice to know that companies are acknowledging that. And um, even just having several different people out there um, working to integrate with different things. I just think it's really neat to see all that's out there and um, so many people that are just trying different things out. There's a physician's assistant. Um, I can't remember her name. It's Nalani something, but Diabetes PA is her Instagram handle. And she is constantly just, she has type one herself and, and sees patients as well. And she's trying all the different things out and giving so many reviews on everything. And I just think it's so neat to know there's such a community out there um, that everyone is just coming together, that we're all on the same team. And um, I just love that so much is developing because it pushes the bigger companies and even the smaller companies to really get creative and meet our patients where they are. Awesome. Awesome. And then that really is, you know the the big push how do we um how do we get patients to go um i often share with patients and they're surprised sometimes when i say to them that my goal secondarily is controlling your blood sugar my primary goal is to get you to live as long as possible and be as healthy as possible and the only way that i know to 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 increase the chances that that happens is to control your blood sugar Right. Yeah. And, and, and so approaching it in that way, I think, does a lot for the patient because it's not just all about that number. It's OK. That number is an indicator of how I'm doing in being able to live long and to be healthy. Um, so we share that with our patients. Well, thank you guys for, for being with us. Um, finally, any, any last words, um, Jill, let, let's start with you. Well, I'll come back to you for a minute because I want you to think about what I'm going to ask you. So, Todd. What would you say to patients now in terms of technology? Uh, you started out by saying that there's hope. Tell, tell us a little bit more about that. The fact that, I mean, there is hope is, is that, first of all, you need to have, have an understanding that you have a team, that a doctor doesn't fix your diabetes, that you, are, you partner with your, your clinician, and knowing that the doctor is going to give you access to tools that can help you. Technology is a part of that. And it really does allow you to live what you would determine to be a much more normal life. And again, I use, I say, I put quotes around that because there is no normal. I mean, everyone's life is different, but if for whatever reason you have diabetes, you don't have to feel like you're doomed to particular outcomes because you can live a long, long life. I actually tell patients, Something other than diabetes complications, something other than this is going to be what does you in because you've got good control. You have really good control. And with the systems that we have today, we can sustain that. And so, you know, whatever it is, doesn't need to be diabetes. That's going to be what takes you to your maker one day. You, you can live a normal life as far as your blood sugar goes and let something else be what you worry about. 
Uh, you just need to do the work. And I tell people the work is, you know, maintaining a healthy diet with the rare exception of eating the things that, but again, that's what everybody needs to do. That's not just diabetes. That's a patient who, you know, I don't have diabetes. I don't need to eat junk all the time. And so understand that you can have a healthy, productive life. I've had a player for the University of Alabama wear his pump under his pads and play in championship games for them. He's living a full life. You know, you are not limited by your diabetes. Uh, you're really, as much as anything, you're limited by your thoughts and, and your ideas on what the diabetes is doing to you. Technology can allow you to live a very, very fruitful, productive, healthy, happy life. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so, Jill, um, so as a patient with diabetes type one and you were diagnosed at a young age, mm -hmm. um, I want you to, to talk particularly to our to our younger folks. Right. Um, and I want I want to set a little backdrop. I had a, a guy that I was taking care of who um, his mom came and he said she said, you know, he's he's behaving oddly, you know, strangely. He was on the swim swim team and he had just joined the swim team. And every time he got off out of the, the 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 pool, he you know, the rest of the team would be at one place and he would go over somewhere else. And and you know, she couldn't figure out what was going on. So finally we brought him in and we sat there and said, you know, tell me what's going on. And he said, he said, Dr. Wood, when I get out of the pool, my fingers are crinkly. Hmm. And everybody could see where I was checking my blood sugar. So he didn't want the rest of the guys on the team to know that was going on. So, so, so talk to, talk to those people, Jill, who are, they're in their teens. They, they may be younger. They don't want to be different. They just mm -hmm. want to be just a regular kid on the swim team, regular kid on the football team, regular kid in class. They want to almost shrink into the wall, right? Mm -hmm. But they're diabetic. They've got to go to the nurse. They've got this pump on. They've got, so, so tell, talk to them for a minute. I mean, I think I would first say I've been in your shoes and I know how it feels. I've absolutely been made fun of for my little medic alert bracelet. And then I decided I wasn't going to wear it anymore and all of those things. But I would say just looking back now, it's absolutely that God used my diabetes for good in my life. And I would not be who I am today. I would not be as strong as I am as um, just as resilient on certain things and just as grateful um, for all of the opportunities that honestly having diabetes has given me that would not, um, that other kids wouldn't have. Um, the amazing camps and going there where you literally are just one and the same as everybody else because everybody has it. And that was such a huge thing for me experiencing that um, with all of my little diabetes friends that I still have great relationships with. And I think just helping them to understand that you're not alone. Um, there are so many other people out there and your diabetes does not define you, but it can absolutely elevate you and give you um, so many opportunities to just the doors are wide open and the sky's the limit, especially with where we're at now in technology and where we're going. It's like now's the time to really just jump in and be excited because we have so much that honestly, other diagnoses, am I saying that right? <laughs> um, would be a lot more limiting. And so I would say be grateful and be excited for what we have and where this, the doors that this could open for you, but also understand that it's okay to be mad at it. It's okay to question and under why me it's okay to have those days because those are absolutely normal for everyone to have those days with whatever's going on in their lives. But just knowing that you're not alone and you are unique in your own special way, just like everyone else is. So that's what I would say. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much once again for uh, being with us. I uh, hope you'll let us invite you again uh, and we'll talk about some other things. Have a great evening and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. What an amazing conversation we've been having with Jill and Todd talking about advances in the management of diabetes. 
If you have not done so, go back and check out our first episode uh, in this conversation. If you are getting good value from the topics that we're covering, if you've not already done so, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell so that you'll be alerted whenever we produce new and interesting topics for you. Also, drop us a message in the comments to our email. Let us know what are some things that you would like us to cover as we develop uh, this channel, as we grow this community. Uh, We are so excited that you are here, that you're taking the time to join us and that you're taking the time to come along with us. So thank you for joining us. This is Dr. Dwayne Wood from Diabetes and Endocrine Wellness Center, educating the public for a better you.